For He's my God and His name is Yahweh. His name is Yahweh. Yahweh. For He's my God and His name is Yahweh. His name is Yahweh. Yahweh. Oh, for He's my God. John, the 10th chapter, verse 27. Are you there? Are you there? How many of you have with your Bible here? Yeah? Raise your Bible up. All right, put it down. John 10, 27. Are you there? Want to go? My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. One more time. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Take it one more time. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. For the last time, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. How to hear God's voice. I wonder if you want that. You want to understand that. How to hear God's voice. Let's take that scripture again. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Like they do in is it children's church? You, you, you quote the chapter and the verse and you memorize. So John chapter 10 verse 27. Uh -uh, uh -uh, say it the way I'm saying it. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. John chapter 10 verse 27. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. How to hear God's voice? How does God speak to people? The mistakes people made in life today will have been averted if they hear God. The problem we have today in Christianity is that people only like to hear God in times of problem. Hello? But a genuine believer would desire to hear God on a daily basis. Some people get to a critical condition. They now say, oh, I just need to hear what God is saying now. No. You need to live a life where you hear God all the time. And for God to speak to you, it's clear in the Bible. It says, my sheep does what? So for God to speak to you, you must be what? A sheep. So if you are not born again, this study may not be too profitable. So only those who are born again are qualified to hear the voice of God. Only those who are new creation. When the kind of life you live is different from the life an unbeliever lives. There are believers today when they stand before unbelievers you can't tell the difference. They're not a Christian. Now there are some people who go to church and yet, people still come to them to suggest sin. Am I saying the truth? And there are some other Christians, when they are coming, unbelievers say, keep quiet, born again, they come. Am I saying the truth? If as a young man, people can still walk up to you and say, ah, look at that girl. Ah, how you see the girl? You are not saved. It's because they see that as a discussion that you enjoy. If 
they still t- can I use your phone to call my girlfriend? Or please, can you borrow me credit to speak to my boyfriend? They know you are not born again. They see you as part of them. If you are born again, they won't, they won't dare that. Hello? There are things they want to do, they won't call you. While I was in campus, something happened. There was a, a student riot. And if you know student riots, if you live among students, when there's a riot, they go around each other's rooms. Is that true? Come on, come on, come on, go, yeah, 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 we know go agree, oh, we know go agree. Is that true? Don't knock by force, you must join the queue. I was the only person they didn't knock on his door. I stood, I was looking at them, we know go agree. Ah, pastor, we don't know, we know go agree, oh, we, pastor, we don't know. We are different. They were greeting me, and they were passing. I'm not talking of. 1,000, not 2,000. And where I live was a very conspicuous place. It was not hidden. It was a place you, you, when you are passing the road, you will see me. And I was waving them. Come and call me now. We are from two different kingdoms. I made my Christianity obvious. I will stand in class and preach. If as a student you want to identify with Jesus, the only way to do it is to preach in class. Because from the day you preach in class, you are careful of how you live. If you mess up, they will remind you. Pastor. But the problem is some of you, when you enter school, first semester, you join them. You dress like them. Hey, finally, finally, admission has come. It's time to wear all the skimpy things. So by the second semester, you now want to declare you are born again. It's too late. They say, you, ah, 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 shut up. You understand me? It's not so. What you do when you enter an area or an atmosphere, declare your stand immediately. Because if you allow it to take one week, the white man says, first impression. Nobody could call me. Students, fellow students will carry my folder for me. When I'm sweating, they will give me, a, I, I will stand in class. I would pick some boys, bad boys, they'll be the ushers. I say, you, you stand, make sure nobody goes out. Yes, sir. Pastor, they preach. Nobody, they come. Sometimes lecturers will come. They say, "On that way to, we'll finish, this, we'll finish this course first. Make you wait." Pastor, they preach. When I finish ministry, power of God, everywhere, bah, 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 the whole class will scatter. When they finish, say, Pastor, yeah. Now we the guard, people they fall, yeah. Give us our own. Such dignity. But today. When they are talking about Christianity, you hear that a believer who is in a department in church is dragging a girl with a court member. Have you seen such situation before? And when they bring such things to me for counseling, I, I ask, what is going on? You don't have it. You are not conscious of your future. Take a stand. When I say things like this, I'm happy that people who schooled with me are not dead. Some of them, when they see me on TV now, they say, we are not surprised. We knew from school this guy was different. I don't mix up with them. I sit on my own. They greet me with their head. This is their classmate. Some of them, we are older than me in age. It's the way you carry yourself. You live in a house, there is a bench in front in the evening. You wear short knicker. Today we we'll go Tori the Tori. <laughs> and all of you will now sit down. You now carry, you now carry tree. Melo. Mama pay see you there. Let me break Melo. If any man be in Christ, all things pass away. All things. Become new. I grew up with that life. I grew up with that character. I grew up with that nature. When I got born again, I got born again well. Some of us, we give our life to Christ on Sunday, on Monday, we take our life back. By Sunday, they will give it to him, on Monday, we will come it. So, for us to go further, you must be what? A sheep to hear his voice. Ask your neighbor, are you a sheep or a goat? I believe there is no goat here. I said there is no goat here. 
don't know why God is putting this in my spirit. You need to make your environment know that you are not playing games with God. You need to make your environment know that you are a believer. Make them know your environment that you are a believer. Hallelujah. Your younger ones know you. Your family members know you at home. If they ask your brother about you, what will he say? If they ask your sister about you, what will they say? In the house, my brothers calls me, my brother, my sister, they call me man of God. I was not a pastor. Man of God. Man of God. Why? When brethren come to greet me, we open the gate, we speak in tongue. We enter the compound. For like 10 minutes. We are going around the compound. We are praying around the house. They, that's welcome. Oh, that tongue is welcome. To say welcome. Don't come on shit. Break the leather ball, sit They are hearing, they are seeing. When it's time to talk, they say things to anger you, and you just smile, you walk away. They said it gets to a point, your life begins to transfer fear into them. That this one, the same mama born also, but <laughs> you get with me. There's some people in it different. But when they shout, you shout. They say, they cry, say, your father. So you are mad. You are mad too. They, say, they will not remind you, Christian. You say, even though I'm a Christian from the day of John the Baptist, <laughs> you are not a believer. Hallelujah. So let me go further. We live in a world of voices. Only one is reliable. We live in a world of voices. Only one voice is what? Once you have a relationship with God, the Bible says, My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Now, once you have a relationship with God, you get the benefits of His voice. That is why when a man gets born again, the next thing he gets is what? The Holy Ghost. So, once you get born again, the next benefit you get is the voice of God. It begins to direct you. If there are some mistakes you can't make, as a student, when I finish praying and I pick up my handout, then it was the days of handouts, God would tell me, go to the first chapter. Skip the second. Go through the third, the second paragraph. It will give to direct me on things to read. By the time I step into the hall, I see the first one, I see the second one, I blame the Galarosha. They say, what? I say, nothing. Hey, 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 hey. 45 minutes, I'm through. There was a lecturer who always speak against God. I've told students that. He was lecturing graphics in mass communication. He would speak against God. He would say things he didn't know. He was a believer. The man was a believer who fell. He fell. Maybe he feel God disappointed him. So it's like he's rebelling back. He said he was a Christian. He told us he would quote scripture, but he would pervert it. One day I stood up in class. I said, I'm representing the kingdom of God. I will close my mouth and somebody ridicule God. I said, sir. You are here to lecture, lecture and get out. Don't speak against God. He said, oh, you have started failing. What is your math number? Give me your matric number. I gave it to him. I gave him the number. He said, you have started failing. Get out of my class. In the whole semester of over three months, I only attended that man's class about three, four times. I finished his exam in 12 minutes. I just got to the hall. I wrote when I was trying to raise up my head. I said, I'll finish. Eh, eh? The Holy Ghost told me. I got the hand that the Holy Ghost said, here, 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 here. Skip this, skip this, skip this. And I did that. And when it was time, he personally came to supervise our class. He came. I said, I'll finish. Eh, give me. What did you write? I thought you have failed. Eh? Eh? Please, everybody, hold on. Was this young man, did he sneak to the class at any time? They said no. He said, if you could finish, he wants to tell me that my questions are weak. Everybody submit. Of course, you trust students. Come and see bad mouth. Pastor, you want to say that you will carry first, Abi? If we fail, you go low. But I made sure I had God. You will hear God. That your response is not of God.
your ears are going to open. Yeah. You are looking for my trouble with that response. Yeah. I say your ears are going to open today. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. And you begin to hear the voice of God clearly. Yeah. Hear this? First Corinthians 14 and verse 10. You could just write it down. There are, it may be, can you hear that? So many kind of voices. None of them is with, without signification. First Corinthians 14 verse 10. He said we live in a generation of different voices. The economy is talking. Satan is talking. Bad friends are talking. Good friends are talking. Your situation is speaking. Your circumstance is speaking. Your family background is speaking. And God is speaking. Fim who do I listen to in a generation so I'm what's the topic of what I'm teaching how to hear God's voice and don't forget I say once you have a relationship with God the next thing is that he speaks to you the first way now hear me if you must hear God at all after salvation please what I'm teaching you now I'm not teaching you with the eyes of members. I'm teaching you with the eyes of ministers. Can you hear me? Because this is not a common thing you tell a baby Christian. Once you are born again, first, if you must hear God, you must be born again. And when you get born again, the next relationship is the voice of God. If you must hear God at all, the first way God must introduce his voice to you is through his word nobody can hear from the holy ghost who has not heard this word and you can't hear from god until you become a a a die hard a fan of god's word you begin to study the word of god you study the word of god with targets every day i must read one chapter Every day, I must read two chapters. Every and you make it a discipline. Stop saying, "Oh, I forgot today." Do you forget to brush your mouth? Am I am I saying talking to somebody? If you are traveling, for example, and you pack your things, you must remember your toothbrush. You must remember your toothpaste. So also make it a lifestyle. As you begin to study God's word, there is something about the voice of God that that starts building around you. God can never. Speak to a man who does not have hunger for his word. Hunger. Hunger. The first six months I got born again, I read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I finished it. I started again. I finished it. I, it, was, it was like a project to me. So if you must hear God, you must hear how God speaks to people. You must know how God talks to people. The first way and the first key that must open other keys is scriptures the word of god do you know that there is what you call a bunch of key when you want to open a door and you have a bunch of key it's not the whole bunch that opened the door is one key is that true so the word of god is that is that key in the whole bunch that is very important and you must you must you must not carry the bible and some of us it's the sunday after sunday we drop the, the next Sunday again. A man of you come to church, a man of God say, Open your Bible to so and so. After a while, open to so and so. When you get back home, you ask yourself a question. This thing, this man of God always tell me to open to open. Let me study to know what is inside. So that will not be telling me. As I'm speaking now, the word of God, God is speaking to somebody. Is that true? That's what I'm telling you. That's the major key. And what opens every other thing i may not be able to tell you many things about my life but i know this one i love the word of god i love the word of god i preached abroad i came here on sunday i preached i was in Binion monday i preached i just came from lagos today i preached then again i'm preaching and i'm preaching different things not the same thing why when you are full of the word you naturally empty the word preach there now i'm preaching again 
Tomorrow I'm preaching. Thursday I'm preaching. Friday I'm preaching. Sunday two service I'm preaching. Different messages. Powerful from God. Why? Because when a person has gotten information of God's word, you naturally begin to remit, emit, vomit what you studied. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. God's word. Say Lord give me appetite. Say give me appetite for your word. Can someone read for me Isaiah 34 16 Isaiah 34 16 Yes Yes He says, search from the book of the Lord. Not one of these shall fail. Is that your Bible? My mouth has spoken to my spirit shall gather them. God says, my word, what that tells you is that God is saying, my word is my mouth. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, said search from the Lord. He said, the mouth of the Lord has spoken and my spirit shall gather the spirit of the Lord speaks of the power of God. So in other words, for you to see the power of God, you must be an addict of the word of God. Let me say this to you. I grew up, I grew up under the late Archbishop, the late Idahosa of Church of God Mission. I grew up in his church as a member. Do you know I had some brothers who were very close to the Archbishop? Just the way today some people can be very close to the Apostle close to the apostle's wife they were very close every time they'll stand by the man's office i want to see papa you ask me would you ask me would you see papa i say no i want to hear what papa is saying is what he's saying i will build on i can tell you this i stand under heaven all my life i only went to see the archbishop once i was a member of that church for about 10 years i only went to see him once and when i went to see him on the altar i was to give him a book there is a book that was written by a man they call it occult grandmaster maybe some of you read the book the man became a christian he was trying to kill the archbishop became a christian and i know the archbishop has not seen the book and that book just came out i gave the archbishop that book that was the only direct contact and yet i stayed in his house good morning sir he said suleiman why is your head on the ground are you still a muslim i said no sir good morning sir good morning man thank you man yes i'm escaping but there's some brethren every sunday they will line up oh we must see papa oh. lay, lay, lay her on me lay her papa lay, lay her on me lay her on me oh that is it today papa has gone to be with the lord they are baby christians but all those why anything papa say i will write now sometimes when i preach and i give out scriptures without going through the, looking at the bible i tell you does it amaze you sometimes no does it amaze you see does this man cram bible members have sent me to say, papa do you cram bible you you you, you talk 10, 10 verses eight verses like that why those period i knew that when you give a man fish like they say you keep feeding him but you teach him how to fish he will take care of himself and that is why i personally made it a habit not to not to become too familiar with members oh, i want to see papa you don't have a good reason you will see me why it's because i need to teach you how to do it by yourself i may not be your office i may not be your compound i may not be your house you cannot carry me there that time but what you know is what you apply gather them my spirit why because they search my word my mouth has spoken make a target make it a target today every day eat it eat it eat it 
Oh Lord, open my eyes and speak to me. Leko sopri otonda lika kubakata. Open my eyes, speak to me. Speak to me. Lord, the letter kill it, but the spirit give it life. Oh God of heaven. Oh God of heaven. Oh God of heaven. Let me see the spirit through the letter. Speak to me. Give me appetite. Up on God. In Luke 24, verse 32. Can somebody read that for me? Oh, Robodosha. I don't know if someone is getting something here. Say that again. Luke 24, verse 32. Why he did what? Open to us. He talked to us. Please, somebody take care of this child. He talked to us. How did he, how did he, how did he talk to us? He did what? Open. Are you are you here? How did he talk to us? He, he said, "Did not our heart speak within us while he spoke to us?" And when he opened, is it in your Bible like that? When he opens, so God talks to you by doing what? Opening. So when the scripture is closed, the voice of God is what? Closed. He spoke to us by opening, 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 opening. There's a level the word of God gets so real to you. Gets so real to you. As, as you begin to study the word of God every day, every day, every day, it becomes so real. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I live more in the air than the land. I, my, I do more journeys in the air than in the land. But there's an assurance I carry. Nothing can hurt me. Why? I have eaten God's word. I have eaten that word. It has entered my spirit. I'm on flight at least 10 times in a week. At least 10 times. At least every week but i just moved there and when there's a turbulence people are panicking i just crossed my leg where how he shall give his angels charge over me that they bear me on their wings so this one is do angel is under angel so make your and you angels will hold it quietly i know that from the world hallelujah obo shalata number two the second way God speaks to us is true inner witness. The inner witness that your spirit bears. I call it a signal sign. Now, now. I call it what? A signal sign. The inner witness. W I T N E W S. Witness. Now look at me. Have you written that? Have you written that down? Look, look at me if you have done that. How many of you have ever seen certain things you prayed and prayed? Certain things just happened. You say, Jay, my mind was saying this thing before. As it, as it say, hey, this thing, this thing just flash. Hey, I just this thing just flash my mind. That's the voice of God. That's the inner witness. Now hear this. As you study God's word continuously, your inner witness gets sharper. I'm, I'm taking it gradually, gradually, gradually. You not get to a level, you become a capon. <laughs> you know what? Then you cross leg, you are drinking tea, and you and God, you are talking. You become a capon. Money was missing yesterday in a government house. Ten million was stolen. 
and they began to beat a boy. They said the boy stole the money. The boy stole the money. That the boy is the PA for domestic affairs. Stole the money and they were beating up the boy. And they, they sent me a text. They said, please sir, who stole the money? I ignored it because I didn't hear anything from God. Secondly, I, I didn't hear anything. God didn't speak to me about it. God was silent. The third time, God spoke. And I called them. I said, put it on speaker. Let everybody hear. I said, you are about eight of you there now. He said, yes. I said, the person you have beaten, this is his name. He said, yes. I said, all of you should kneel down and apologize to him. I said, your excellency, sir. A girl slept in your room last night. He said, yes. I said, this is her name. He said, yeah. I said, she, somebody you have been dating. He said, I said, that girl took your money. When I mention a girl, they must say, eh, it's okay, it's okay. Eh, remove it from speaker. Eh, re, 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 eh, remove it. I said, leave it there. I said, see it. Don't remove it. Hey, let me hear. A girl. The, the, the man said, okay. Eh, it's okay, it's okay. Eh, it's okay. Uh, Apostle, can you call my private line and let us um, 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 just, just um, um, tell me um, tell me, tell me personally. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay, okay, yes. I said, let me finish. But it's a process. That's what I'm teaching you now. You will get there. You know, I want to make us to get to a point when we just come to church. Oh, we just, we just worship God, hear God. No problem in anybody's life. That's, that's a complete church. When they say, Let's pray for the sick. And somebody come out crippled. The church here. People see the cripple. It will be strange. It is when the church get close to that stage that the coming of Christ is near. It will be strange. A man of God, they call him Pastor Benny Hinn. He has an anointing for healing. One time he went to preach in a church, pastor by a man, Charles and Francis Hunter. After I finished preaching, he said, I want to pray for the sick. All those who are sick, he was there for more than 10 minutes. Nobody came out. You know, I talked to the man, I said, what's going on? The man said, Pastor, no sick person enters here sick and leaves here sick. Everybody was well. A church that is a full church must operate the nine gifts of the Spirit. In our witness, Romans chapter 8 and verse 16, hear what the Bible says, the Spirit beareth witness with our spirits that we are the children of God. Oh, and look at the place Pastor read just now in Luke 24 32. He said, Did our spirit not bear witness? Oh my God. Did our spirit, is that in your Bible? There was something inside us. But what makes it sharp? As you study the word of God all the time. The spirit of man. Is the candle of the Lord searching the inward parts of the belly? Proverbs 20 27. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching the inward parts. Let me tell somebody now say, Your inner witness will come alive. Say that again. Let somebody read for me. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 4 Psalm chapter 46 verse 10 Somebody read 1 Peter 3 verse 4 Yes Shh. Sister read it Yeah mm. Quiet spirit Which word? great prize. So, now another way, I said you, you sharpen your inner witness by the voice of God and the second way you sharpen your inner witness is by having a quiet spirit. Quiet spirit. When, hear me? Alright, you write that down. Hear me? When you leave, hello? I don't know, are you getting something much there? If I said for your inner witness to be sharp, you need to hear God's word. And the second thing that makes your inner 
partnership is maintaining a quiet spirit. Anybody who lives around an atmosphere of strife, quarrel, fight, misunderstanding, your spirit is not quiet. It's always reacting. You don't hear God. Why you should carry your leg and run from quarry? It can, it can kill the voice of God. One of the strengths I have today when I talk about my marriage and my home is not because I'm trying to make my wife appear too big. She does not give me an atmosphere to exchange words. So it helps my relationship with the Holy Spirit. Quiet spirit. Quarter today, fight tomorrow. Quarter today, fight. before you fall into a trap, you will know. But once your spirit is always calm, it picks God. He said, to, he said in God's word, the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit. So please run from misunderstanding. Run from quarrels. It will kill the voice of God. When I notice there is somebody around me who always wants to make me offended, I put in my mind a barrier. Because even the person may be enjoying it, but it will affect me. I put in my mind, I, I avoid. I deliberately avoid. I talk, I relate. I say hello. But in my mind, I avoid. Why? Because the more you get offended, the more you begin to get angry, the more you get offended, the more the voice of God becomes dull. So run from strife. Run from quarrel. Young ladies, if you're in a relationship with somebody and everything, the person gets offended, everything, the person got upset, if you do not reply, there will be no fight. There is only fight when you talk back. So when the person says, sorry, I must hear God, sorry, I must hear God, sorry, I must hear God, sorry. Hello? But when you reply, and I've told, you see, in this church, if anybody has a marriage that fail when we get to heaven i will personally flog you with my belt me me i will flog you before you enter i will stand by the door say master please i am a pastor up to this place i'm the pastor let me because i have exposed a lot of secrets is that true i've taught you if pastors if bankers if people when they are millions of billions are buying our tapes and understanding marital strategy and you are buying the tape or in fact not buying the tape you you have bought the pastor you didn't buy the tape you have bought the pastor and you still have a problem in your home then we should ask you a question the problem in this century that ladies cannot just hold themselves if you say you want to marry somebody you believe this person is your head he reply you with a text. He send you a text with an insult. You reply him with an insult. You don't believe you will marry him. Because if it's your head, you better learn now to be the neck. Start learning. Don't wait till you are married. If you are not submissive before marriage, you can't be submissive after marriage. I was not married to my wife when she was kneeling down to greet me. We are not married. When she, we are not married when she will kneel down to give me water. We are this, this apart. You are not married. I will come to the house. I will sit down, greet the mom. I say, I'm thirsty. She will kneel down to greet me. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. It was not marriage. Because if you do, don't do those things in courtship and you don't want to do it in marriage, it is strange. It's like home video. <laughs> you will not say yes, sir, before you're not married. Say yes, sir. You must say, hey, hey, hey. Let me now. <laughs> you are not kneeling down before you not get married you want to serve you you not need that you might run back so what what now what what no it, no, no it does not it does not just rhyme I, I, am i saying the truth it, it doesn't rhyme it doesn't follow you are not doing these things before you are not pretending it doesn't follow so having a good home is not a prayer point it's a deliberate step can't fail in life I can't I can't I can't fight my wife let, 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 me, let me tell you the truth sometimes hello see see I'm a pastor that if I kill somebody I will stand on this altar and tell you 
Please, I killed somebody yesterday. Don't kill you. I'm that kind. Are you following me? Are you hearing you know what I'm talking about? How many of you know I, I, I talk? I say things that you don't hear on the altar. Sometimes I get angry and send my wife some kind of text. Eh? If you read that, she's here. <laughs> if you read some text, I get so angry. When I say bad text, not the type some of you send, Chao. God will punish you, you will die. Hey, no, I can just. Please don't call me. I'm not happy. I'm not in a good mood. Don't call me now. Are you what I'm talking about? And she will reply me, Apostle, Apostle. <laughs> Sometimes she call me, I'll look at the phone. I can't, I can't stand that she's calling. I don't pick. I can't stand it. My conscience. I'll just be, hello. So what? Man of God. I said, you think I'm joking? I said, oh, me, I'm joking, no. If you're not joking, me, I'm joking. You don't chop. <laughs> I said, I'll call this call now if you have nothing good to tell me. He said, let's gist now, let's gist. <laughs> it dies. But that is where yes, some ladies, I don't want to talk to you now. Eh, 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 okay, eh, okay. If you're not talking to me, you're talking to somebody else. Holy Ghost, fire. You are in primary three. They should not give you husband. <laughs> now, now, that's why if a lady is not born again, getting married to her will be a problem. If a man is not born again, getting married will be a problem. Now, uh, now, don't don't just blame only the lady. Men also have their problem. There's a way a man will treat a lady. Treat a lady. She she beer 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 beer. One day something will come out. Hear this. I can never preach when my wife is not happy. She's the one here now. And my wife is not a truthful person. If you lie, you will see from her face that you have lied. She will bend her head. Hmm? This one I lie. Oh. She's that kind of person. If I stand on the altar and say, four days ago, I say some things. When I get to my wife, I say, oh, it wasn't four days. It was five days ago. I say, ah, ah. Can I remember the exact day? He say, no, next time. So that you don't put yourself in God's trouble. Just say some days ago. I say, you mean all that God did, the only thing you wrote down is that small mistake. He said, no, you must make heaven with me. It keeps me in check. There is a way you treat a lady, you treat you lie, lie, lie. There are some men, eh? Jesus. If they say good morning, it's a lie. Look outside, it may be evening. A young lady was talking to me. She's a very popular actress. Popular actress. She had an issue with the person she wants to marry. And I called two of them. I said, you sit down here. You sit down here. I said, my son, talk to me first. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Everything, everything is going fine. It's going fine. It's just that she is not humble. She is not humble. She is not humble. She should humble herself. And it got talking. When the lady started, she would talk to her and look at the guy. Yeah. Yeah. You cheat on her and you lie on top. You lie, you lie, you lie, you lie. No woman likes to be treated like rag. You can do anything to a lady. Don't beat her and don't lie to her. Thank you. All right, so let me go to my message. Did you get anything at all from there? Psalm 46 and verse 10. Did somebody read that? Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and what? No. Now look at me. When you are in the midst of confusion, everybody, ruru, 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 be what? There's a crisis. Be still. Your inner witness will give you a suggestion. And what it tells you is what God is saying. So the next trouble that you encounter, what do you do? 
Be still. Have you heard? Have you heard? Be still. The problem is human beings find it hard to be still. Be still. I know. Father, give us the grace to be still. Number three. Can I, can I round up or I just go further? Is it number three? Number three. True dreams. How to hear the voice of God? Number three. True what? True dreams. Most dreams carry a spiritual message. In fact, let me say this now. All dreams carry if this cd is on video i would advise you to buy it i'm not know it's worth buying listen and listen and listen and train yourself to get used to it number three now a dream carries a spiritual message it may be negative or positive now look at this look at this look at me a dream carries a spiritual message negative or positive it is true that you saw a bad dream the problem is don't accept it did I say something? When you dream and it's negative, wake up and say, Father, Lord, thank you for revealing to me the plan of the enemy. But Lord, I reject it. Not to stop panicking. Hey, I dream, I dream that I died. Cancel it. So people are now, uh, they, they are now in bondage because of their dream. If that dream, you have no power over it, God will not show you. Oh my God, oh my God. I say, if you have no power over the dream, it should have happened before at the time. But since God showed you ahead, it means you can stop it, you can fight it, you can destroy it. Shout fire! Dream! Judges chapter 7 from verse 12 to verse 15. Somebody Job chapter 33 and verse 4. Somebody read Judges 7, 12 to 15. Another person, Job 33, verse Behold, I dreamed a dream. Uh huh. Shataya. Hold on, hold on. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Now let me explain that thing. Now, look at this, look at this. The Midianites came against Israel. And all of them, the Bible said they were like sand. Too much to be numbered. They covered the whole street everywhere. Everybody was living in fear. They were hiding. They were hiding. They were hiding. Even Gideon was what? Hiding. And Gideon had two people discussing. One said, I saw a dream. In that dream, look at what happened. Look at what happened. Look at what happened. Look at what happened. And the other said, in, in the place where they were hiding, the other said, this dream you saw of somebody conquering the Midianites is nothing but it's the sword of Gideon. In other words, it is Gideon God wants to use to conquer the Midianites. As soon as Gideon had that, from here he was hiding. Hey! Why? Because by that dream, I now know what God is saying. So a positive dream will come to encourage you. When you see a good dream, money came to your hand. God bless you. Wake up with joy, with excitement. How you receive a dream is what determines if the dream will come to pass. It is negative. Stand up. I shall not die. This casket is not for me. This cup is not for me. I reject it. Now, when you now see a dream more than once, don't just buy it. Apply it fast. Once you saw coughing, once you saw your brother die, you saw it again. You saw it. Apply fasting. See, today I'm not going to eat. I reverse it. Gideon saw that. Gideon, hey! 
for them to dream and see me. Hey, why am I hiding? I'm not hiding again. I'm coming out. When people see good dreams, you only hear them talk about it. You dream, you saw yourself in a fine place, it looks like a palace. You just wake up. See, ah, when that one go happen, <laughs> palace, <laughs> Ooh, dash, monkey, banana. When there's a dream of an accident, you are panicking. Since you didn't believe that one, why do you believe this one? No, why? Why would you believe this one when you didn't believe that one? So dream is not what you, it's not what you make, should put in bondage. This is how to handle dreams. When it's negative, reject it. It's positive, accept it. The next portion of scripture, who's reading that? The Spirit of God has made me and the bread of the Almighty has given me life. So I live based on the Spirit and I live based on the bread that comes from God. In Acts chapter 12, read 7, read 8 when you get back, write it down. One day the Bible says a man called Peter, Simon Peter, he was sitting down and God showed him a dream. Showed him some dead and rotten things and God said eat it. And Peter said, I'm a Jew. I've never eaten anything unclean. And God said, They're not. They're not called unclean what I've made clean. And God revealed to him about Cornelius in a dream. But today, that is why, listen to this. The highest realm of demonic manipulation is through dreams. When Satan wants to pervert a man's life, will come through dreams they will feed you in the dream they will sleep between the dream they'll be chasing you in the dream they will tie you in the wilderness in the dream why satan knows how powerful or if if he doesn't do that you will make sure you dream before you wake up you forget see i'll be dream one dream yesterday who i enter motto i enter motto i enter motto no motto enter me motto enter me no motto enter uh, oh, oh. Hey. Uh, I go market. I go market. I go market. I go market. No, market, come meet me. I go. Ooh. Satan knows <laughs> that if you can remember today, whatever makes you forget your dream, I set it on fire. I say, whatever makes you forget your dream, I chase it by fire. In the name of Jesus, you will no more forget your dream. You will no more forget your dream. You will no more forget your dream. And anything manipulating your dream through marine spirits, through spirit wife, today I say catch fire. 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 fire. Somebody shout fire. Bolododo Satana. Can I round up now? I said, can I round up? <laughs> Are you learning something? You see that dream? You start panicking. Went. What do you see concerning what you saw? So we cannot agree. He said, no, I don't. It's just too natural. Now, Satan stopped showing me dreams because of the way I mock him. I don't dream evil. I'm telling you the truth, standing here under God. Have I ever woke up one day and said, I dream one thing? All the years we've been married. Say, only get one bad dream, I just dream now. Hey, hey. Oh, my hand, oh, my hand. Let us rebuke the devil. Hey, hey. That's never happened. Why? I told you there was a time I dreamed that I died. I died in the dream. They were now burying me. First of all, when I woke up, I asked myself, if they are really burying somebody, will you be seeing yourself? No, if they are putting somebody in the grave, will you be seeing yourself? And I stood up. I heard God's word. I spoke in tongues. I stopped. In the middle of the night, there was no light. It was just a lantern that was on. No light. Years ago, I said, Satan, if your father and your mother that died, if you know you are Satan, as I sleep now, show me another bedroom. And I went back to bed. I now dreamt. I saw myself on the white chair. I was sitting down like a throne. Satan paid me compensation. 
to, to, to balance for that rubbish dream. Me dream that I die. If I ever see I dream that I injure, I will kill at least 10,000 demons that night. For, for daring to show me that dream, all the blood bank in data, blood bank in us, in, 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 in only child, blood bank in the way, all the blood, by the time they know what I will do because of that dream, they will look for another candidate. I say, Lord, I did, I did have prayer point before. By this dream, I now have prayer point. All the blood bank in Somalia, Australia, in Ghana, all the blood bank in Namibia, in South Africa, in Germany, in Spain, I, I declare the blood bank catch fire. All the demons in the tree, the road. Hey, you see the panicky. Why did you show him that kind of dream? Why did you show him that kind of dream? That's how like you wake up, you're not shaking. I dream that they were feeding me. Even my belly is pinning me now. So. <laughs> my labo shaladada. Number four. True vision. 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 Vision is a, is a supernatural insight into the plan of God for your life. Vision is a supernatural insight into the plan of God for your life. Vision. Vision is a supernatural insight into God's plan for your life. Now, hear this. Listen, there are three kinds of visions. Please, anything I'm telling you now, I'm telling you out of my work with God. Are you following me? Out of my work with God for 18 years, out of my work with God, I'm telling you these things. There is open vision. Open vision, now not everybody will experience this as you grow in God. Open vision, maybe some of you experience it. Look at this. Look at this. How many of you can just be praying, praying, praying? You open your eyes, all of a sudden you just see something. Pyam. That's open vision. Can just be praying. Bala, bala, bala. I mean, we now go outside. Something will now happen. Wait, I, I saw this thing. But you can't, you can't place where you saw it. But you know you saw something like this. Oh. You see, but I, I, you see, I can't remember, but I saw, Abi. I saw something like, I saw something like this before. I don't know what's going on. You pass. It's a vision. But it's very fast. You have that so you must maintain quietness. Because when your spirit is quiet, it's a phase. When you know God's word, you get inner witness. You know inner witness, your dream is sharpened. Your dream is sharpened, you see open vision. It's a phase. So, by the time your eyes are closed like that, are open rather, and you see it's called open vision. An open vision always manifests in the life of those. Open, close vision or trances always manifest in the life of those who are prayer machines. You must give yourself to prayer. When you are always a person that prays, you just say things. Open vision. Then there is close vision. Close vision happen. You are praying. Have you been in prayer meetings before? You see people praying, praying, praying. They say somebody now say, "Amen." Wait, wait. I just saw something. Huh? Close vision. The eyes was still praying. Hola koti zopra kata in ben miso lova zigara. Amen, amen. Wait, I just saw something. Close vision. Your eyes are shut. You saw it. The first is open. The second is what? Oh, talk to me. The first is what? The second is what? How do you see open vision with your eyes? Close vision with your eyes. But first, you must be in the attitude of prayer. You must have a prayer spirit, a praying spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, don't always pray when there is a former call for prayer. Amen. We have gathered this money again. Let's begin to praise the Lord. Is the money devotion now? As we are gathered now, so we are going to now praise God. So, amen. 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 Your hands. Your hands, your hands. Oh, good morning, Jesus. Good morning, love. I know you come. Oh, you are not clapping. You are not clapping. You never wake. 
Do you never wait? Oh, yeah, clap. I know you come from heaven above. You, I know the way of Angela. Wake Angela, wake Angela. Angela is sleeping. Amen. Samson, 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 you are sleeping. See your head. <laughs> and they're clapping, you know. This, this one devotion. Have you not seen that happen? I know you come from Paul. It is the beast, the beast that you eat last night that's affecting you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> what God are you praising? My friend, close that meeting. They start checking. Amen. Amen. Wake up. Wake up. Amen. How, how can you be singing good in Jesus? Please stop it. Jesus Christ did not sleep. You are the one that slept. Stop saying good morning. It's a wrong song. Are you following me? Don't say good morning, Jesus. It's a wrong song. Listen, let's not do in Christianity. There's something I made up my mind. When I got born again, when I see something, if it has no I look for what does it signify? If it does not say, I don't say because I met it. So let me follow it. No. When I, I grew up among Catholics. When I got born again, school, Catholics, they were carrying chaplets. I say, what does chaplet mean? Tell me. I hear them, you know, count chaplet, chaplet. Something will happen. They will carry chaplet. And the Bible says, thou shalt have no other graven image. Graven image means something that was created by a man. So I told them, I said, this is wrong. It's wrong. I don't need to attach anything. And that is why in this church, we don't worship anointing oil. We don't worship anchor chief. We only go for the word of God. There are churches today, on Wednesday, they'll take communion. Have you not seen them? On Sunday, communion. On Tuesday, communion. Hey! Bible says when you take the body of Christ, do it worthily. It's a scarce commodity, not every week. Smokers will line up to take communion. People that have guest will take communion. Bible says if you know you are a sinner, don't go there. There are churches. Tuesday, communion. Wednesday, communion. Friday, communion. They are traveling, they carry nothing on on their tire, they carry nothing on on the steering. On ah uh, ah. Uh. Say this and nothing on I turn to the blood of Jesus. I turn to the blood of Jesus. Oh, just one church. Tire on the steering. They tie catch you from the neck. I don't know. Oh yeah, oh yeah, blood, blood, head, blood. They are not their children every morning. The blood, the blood, the blood. Naturally, naturally. If that's how they waste the blood, if, the blood, if I never finish. This is my strength. Sometimes I pray with people. They say, what do I do? I say, nothing. Just believe. Uh -uh. Your whole your, your, your Christianity, I don't understand. Though. They will tell us. They will give us oil. I say, I don't know. I don't say because this is what I met. I should follow it. You know, I grew up. I grew up. I grew up. I discovered that lots of people, when they want to call the Holy Ghost, say the Holy Ghost is a dove. Have you heard that before? Have you heard it? See, it's a dove. When you want to draw Holy Ghost, they put one bear, one pigeon. See, Holy Ghost. The Bible said the Holy Ghost came as a dove on Jesus. Was there another place he came again as a dove? That's the only place. So how can you take one encounter and build a doctrine on it? Okay, now, lost wife turned to salt. Let's not eat salt. You can eat salt you eat is lost wife. So when we see things, let's let's know what it means. Oh boy. Some people, some ministry, they say handkerchief is called mantle. Is that true? This handkerchief is called what? It's called what? Mantle. Ladies and gentlemen, mantle is mantle, handkerchief is handkerchief. Mantle is mantle, handkerchief is handkerchief. The Bible says, and the mantle of Elisha fell. It was no handkerchief that fell, it was mantle. Acts chapter 19 said, handkerchief were taken from Paul and given to the sick and they were healed. It was still called handkerchief. The name did not change. Handkerchief is handkerchief, mantle is mantle. Let's follow God's word. Practical Christianity. Sign of the cross is not scriptural. Sign of the cross is not scriptural. 
Jesus Christ is not still on the cross. He only died on the cross. So you cannot use an object of defeat to get victory. Jesus did not rise on the cross. He died on the cross. So you see a problem I are doing like they are saying, I, I accept defeat. I accept that my Jesus is still on the cross. I accept. You can't use a sign of defeat to claim victory. Oh Lord. So when you do like this, you are still saying the Jesus, hear me, hear me. The Jesus on the cross was carrying sin was carrying problems of this world so anytime you put the sign of the cross you are inviting what was on him sin problems but today what happened the temple say this will happen to you say blood of jesus why because that's what you grew up to meet This is <laughs> oh boy this is the problem i have with Pente, Pente, so called pentecostal let me not talk too much let me keep quiet this is what i have with so called penty what costa and that's why omega Fire ministry is not a pentecostal church <laughs> is, it, eh? Eh? is it orthodox eh? can i explain to you Pentecost means when the Holy Ghost came down. And when you get born again, what you experience is Pentecost. But the, the disciples went beyond Pentecost. The Holy Ghost came down on them at Pentecost. After the Bible said, and they were filled. So we have moved beyond Pentecost. We are now in the realm of the Holy Ghost. I sit down and I study. Then the third one is what I call a trance. Now, I'm still talking on that vision. First is what? First is what? Second is what? The third is what? How many of you know if you went, if you are you watch TV, you see what they call breaking news. Have you seen that? It comes. Hey! Sometimes when it comes, it comes to enforce your victory. It comes. There was a time we were praying for a sister. She's been pregnant for about four years. We were in campus. This Christian sister brought the prayer request and gave us. She said, my sister for four years has been pregnant. In the vigil, while we were praying, about to round up. And she just, you know, told us. I will be to pray, Father Lord, whatever is holding the baby. Libo Shalabaka, Marco Sigrade, Lebala. We're praying, praying. After we finished praying, we had exams. It was in it was in the SLT, a science lab technology hall. So we scattered ourselves after prayer. We had exam in the morning. So some people didn't want to go home. Exam by 6:37. So some lay down there, some lay, some lay by three. Why it was some minutes to four? No, past four. I woke up. Hey, Bo Shada, thank you, Jesus. Like that, so people began to wake up, and I gathered them. I said, Sister, your sister will give birth this morning. Eh? I said, Your sister, I just saw it. Is her name so and so? He said, Yes. How did you know? I said, I just saw something now. I saw a baby, and I saw people were calling her name and congratulating her. I said, mm, okay. Oh. After the exam, she came to the house. She was jumping. She was happy. I said, what? She got a call. Her sister gave it. How did I know? A trance. A trance is a response to, an, to a, a desire and a prayer. Or a response to an answered prayer. But ladies and gentlemen, check every trance with the word of God. Because some trance can be satanic. And perverted. Listen to this. Anything God has is original. For everything original God has, Satan has a counterfeit. Oh boy. There is original husband. There is counterfeit husband. There is original wife. There is counterfeit wife. There is fake prophet. And there is fake member. Fake, fake prophet.
prophet, prof, some of them who are, if they prophesy on you, it must end up in money. If they give prophecy now, so this thing you are, you are going, going to is very serious. We are going to handle it. Handle it. I've, I've been praying for people like you before. So you bring 25,250 naira. I will give you oil. Now, don't lie. How I many of you have ever, you have, it has ever happened to you before? Raise your hand. Don't lie or don't lie. God bless you. You see? One man saw my TV and he told somebody, he said, why is this man wasting prophecy? If now me mom, ya go make. And that is why God can never visit such a person. Fake. Some of them, after counseling young girls, they say, come and see me. Have you not heard that before? Have you not heard that? Now, what can you say in private that you cannot say in public? Or, can you, or that you cannot take off the mic and say? It's not necessary. I've seen some pastors who go to preaching programs. When they walk into a place, you see like three, four girls will be among their entourage. You've not seen that before. The small confused girls wear their black skirts and their white top. They carry Bible. Shikele bobo bobo bobo. Shikele bobo. Fellow, as fellow guest speakers, as the man is preaching, they are saying, Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, confuse a fool. That's why they are going like that. <laughs> yes, Lord, as the man is singing, they will carry my phone, they are backing him up. The man will sing, Hallelujah. They will raise up their hands, Yeah, 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 yeah. Shut up. Are you worshiping God? Anytime, Only anytime I see people worshiping God, worship, oh, this is not special number, worship. The sins, my soul, my soul, sin, my soul, my soul, yeah, yeah, I worship you, Lord, my soul, my soul, do you ever take my blessing from him? Among the gods, the gods, in the air, the gods, in the land, the gods, the gods, in the sea, drop the microphone. You are talking about business with the Almighty. You are showing us your voice. When I stand before God, I am. Sometimes my wife can tell me when I get to church, she's talking and look at her, my face change. She says, No verse, no verse. I'm standing before the Almighty God, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I'm just, Yeah, 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 yeah. And just say, And just say, Hey, come. When this man is making noise, throw him outside. I walked out of the church because of that. In the midst of worship, the guy came. Thank you, Jesus. Let's worship the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's shine of days. It's shine of days. It's shine. It's shine. You are the shine of days. It's shine. It's shine. It's shine. I said, Pastor, okay, let's go outside. <laughs> I said, when this noise maker finish what he's doing his own. We cannot worship God the proper way. If you are presenting a song and others are listening, you can do what you want to do. But now we are all worshiping God together. You are hard leaping. Eh? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. One more and then we'll pray. I like this one. The audible voice. This is the one that I live with. This is the one that I carry. You hear God like a loudspeaker. You hear God clear. Like somebody's talking to you. Somebody asked me one time, he said, How do you hear God? I said, The way you just asked me this question, and that's how I hear him. Audible. I could stand and I'm hearing it. I'm hearing it. I'm hearing it. Pashata, may your ears open in this evening service. <laughs> Acts chapter 9, verse 3 to 5, and verse 7. Acts 9, 3 to 5, verse 7. Acts 9, Acts chapter 9, verse 3 to verse 5. 
and verse 7. Acts of Apostle. Yeah, come on, Pastor, read it. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly then shone a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth. Had a voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, read verse 7. Look at that. Hold on. He said, while he fell on the ground, a voice spoke. And the men around were confused. Why? They heard the voice. But they were not seeing anybody. That's what happens sometimes. The Lord begins to speak to certain people. And they're talking, like, eh? Why is he hearing it? Hello? Why is he hearing it? The voice spoke. And this is a dimension that must happen when you have passed through the other realm. Listen, not everybody will tell you a secret. Hello? There is nothing I'm hiding. You know why? Can I tell you why? Why I'm telling you everything? Before you will get to this level now, I don't go. Before you start practicing this one to get here now, I have climbed another level. More to go. Let's be going. <laughs> That's why I don't hide anything. I tell my pastors, I tell them everything. I see some of them. They will charge. They will start flowing. I say, before you start praying for cripples, I have added more to what I know. Audibly. But this particular one, you have to have be used to other voices because Satan can pervert this voice. This one is where most people have missed it. We heard about a young man who entered the zoo in Ogba. He finished fasting in Ogba um, camp and the voice said to him, the anointing of Daniel is upon you. Enter the zoo. <laughs> Hold on. The guy entered the zoo. He said, want to enter the zoo. He said, no. You want to see the lion? He said, no. Open the zoo. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, if he enter the zoo, what will he achieve? That's why you must check those voices you hear with God's word. Daniel was in the lion's den because they threw him there. This one you threw yourself inside. <laughs> he donated himself. And I, now, hear this. To know how God is merciful, he entered there. Was they say, see? They are mentioned upon that. The lion did not say anything. The lion was quiet. The voice spoke. Go close to the lion. <laughs> he carried a leg again. So you see? Because the lion was still calm and he was telling a Christian brother outside all he was hearing the voice said I should move close the brother stood back are you sure this is God See, the voice said I should go he went when the lion reacted it was his bones that were left the carcass you must wait with God's word A man said to me, say one time, he said, Yeah, the voice. The voice said, Leave your wife. Leave your wife. She's evil. She's evil. She is evil. God is not a comedian. He's not a dramatic. <laughs> I don't hear one voice now loud. He just talked to me with bars. Go. <laughs> and the guy came to me he said I had a voice I should drive my wife I said that's not of God he said well I said let's check it from God's word God is against divorce he said but God says she's a witch I said witches can be delivered bring her she said God said our own witchcraft cannot be delivered I said that's Satan because any voice that says that is trying to say that witchcraft is stronger than God check it in God's word The young lady came to me. He said, I had a voice. The boy said, you will die this year. He said, so I'm selling my things because God wants to call me home. 
He said, I know it's of God. God wants to call me home. I said, you have a problem. Before you sell some of the things, can you transfer them to me? Since you want to go now. He said, what do you mean? I said, what the Bible says, I shall not die. If that voice comes and the voice does not go with the word of God, cancel it. Oh, boy. One time, Jesus was on the mountain. And Peter and John were confused. And the voice spoke and said to them, This is my beloved son. Yeah, he, him. Audible. This is not a realm for children. It's not a realm. This is a realm where you can now stand and say, On the 15th of July, this will happen. You heard it. You heard it. On so and so and so, this will happen. You heard it. And it comes to pass. As audible. 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 Stand up on your feet. One minute. I just had something now. Sit down. Somebody want to ask questions. I only take four because I want us to be here to be out of here 640. So I only take four questions. You want to ask a question? Raise your hand up. Your right hand up. The first person. One, two, three. Choir. Philip. Number one. If your question does not make sense, I won't answer it. Praise the Lord. Daddy, I want to ask if, for example, you have a dream and dream is in the form of parable, how will it then connect it with the scriptures? If you have a dream, it's a form of what? In the form of parable. When you have a dream that you do not understand, the first thing you do, you pray to God for understanding. Lord, this is not clear to me. Make it known. If it repeats itself again, that's when you now see your pastor. Anyhow you can communicate to him, relay your dream to him. Let him explain. Do you understand that? All right. Number two. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So please, I want to ask, as in having dream frequently, is it of God? What do you mean by that? Like maybe anytime you sleep, even though for one second, you must dream. I don't understand. What does that mean? Sir, like, like rephrase it, rephrase it. Sir, like if I dream, if I sleep, even though for two minutes I must dream. About what? About something. How? What kind of thing? There, listen, there are different reasons why people dream. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes that most dreams come up multitude of business. If you want to marry somebody and you always see her, you're always thinking about her, you will dream. You will see her in your dream. You like Jeep so much, so much. Any Jeep passing, you will see Jeep. You will dream. You will see Jeep in your dream. You like money so much, so much. You will dream. You will see money. Most dream out of multitude. If you are a person whose mind is always occupied, you will keep dreaming. But if you are a person, these are things you are not even thinking about. They just come. They just come. Then God is trying to tell you a message. That's number one. Number two, if most of your dreams are, if you are a person, one minute you dream. So, and these are dream things that go in line with what happens to people then God is trying to let you know that is your gift are you following me you notice that you, it must happen it must happen that is the way God wants to minister to you I have some friends today who are in the prophetic before they go to any program they will dream everything you see they will just walk to the altar they will start running to the back why? In their dream, that's when they saw a witch. See? I saw it. I saw, eh, madam, you're the one I saw. Come, come. Confess. Dream. It will take three days to fast and pray, and God will show them in a dream everything about the program. So it could be a gift, but when you are, when you are not always thinking. <laughs> a young man came to me. There was a particular girl I wanted to marry, and the girl was very wealthy. She was a bank manager, so she was afraid to go and approach the girl. Every time 
One time the girl was worshipping God. He brought out his phone and snapped her in worship. So anytime you look at the picture, oh Father Lord, grant my heart desire. So one time he had a dream and saw he was having a sexual relationship with her in the dream. He never started thanking God. Among the gods who is like thee, this is a sign that God has approved. He came to me as a please try and be in deliverance service. That is spirit wife. <laughs> She's not the one you saw. It's her face they use to keep you in bondage. Number three. That sister. Oh, Shatawalaya. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir, for giving me this privilege. Sir, I want to ask a question. What sort of something will happen to somebody and look as if it has happened for like a month ago? Look as if you see yourself in somewhere and it's happening now. You are trying to stop it, but you cannot stop it. What does that mean? Not that you saw it before, but it's like something that's happened before. Yes. That's what they call schizophrenia. It's a demonic case. It's a demonic case. There are times, it's not as if it's a revelation. It's a feeling. That, ah, I don't know this thing. There's something about this thing that's not right. It's a feeling. It's a demonic case. It's not, it's not, that one is not of God at all. Are you following me? Is called schizophrenia. It also goes along with hearing voices, strange demonic voices. By the time those things are connected, it means you need to go for deliverance. Hello? All right, number four. Yeah, that is, uh, for, I actually read a book, How to Hear God is a title, and the, the preacher there said, irrespective of who you are, whether you are a sinner, you are a born again, that you can hear God audibly and he backed it up with this scripture we read last of Saul hearing God even when he was not yet converted so for a very long time since I read that book it has been bothering my heart I think this is a very good atmosphere to what's your question that is it true he backed it up with the scripture that Saul was not born again when he heard God that irrespective of who you are you can hear God if God speaks to everybody God speaks to people by circumstances. God speaks to people by conditions. But you ask yourself a question. What did God tell Saul? Are you following me? How many of you know when I stand up and I say, Jesus is here. My brother, God is calling you. God is talking to you. Hello? It's audible through my voice. He's talking to you. But no sinner can hear God on a constant basis audibly. The only time a sinner can hear God is a call to salvation. Not a call on how to live your life. Jesus came to introduce himself to Paul. You cannot be a sinner and hear God audibly. The only call you hear from God is salvation. There's somebody here, Jesus is calling. You want to hand over your life to Christ. You have lived a life of sin. God, God is speaking to one person. And they start coming out. That's what happened to Saul. Saul did not listen to any priest, any prophet. He was killing them. So Jesus himself out to minister salvation to God. So the only time a sinner hears God is the call for what? Salvation. Not on a fellowship basis. You must be born again to hear the voice of God. Give the Lord a clap offering. And you know, I have over 40 ways to hear God. You know, one of them, again, and I'll pray, is worship. When you are a person who worships God. Now listen. There are people that could be worshipping. Look at this. They could be worshipping. And they are noticing what's around them. Look at me. Look at me. Everybody. Look at me. There are people that could be worshipping. They notice what's around them. Are you following me? Oh Lord my God. How is it? No, you close your eyes. No, you close your eyes. It's your name. You know. Oh. This keyboard says. Eh? Yet, how excellent is your name, O oh Lord, my God, how excellent is your name, in all the earth, how excellent is like unto thee, O oh. Among the gods who is like the glorious holiness, fearful, 
<laughs> now, you know what I'm trying to demonstrate. Their heart is not there. Listen, if you are worshiping God, you will not know if your phone is ringing. That's you hear God in the midst of worship when your worship is total. Rise up. Down at your feet, oh Lord, is the most high place in your presence, Lord. I seek your face. I seek your face. I want you to 
ask God now, Father, give me the grace to live pure. Grace to live a holy life. Grace to live a righteous life. Grace to live a pure life. I must make heaven. I refuse the, the power of equity. Heaven is my portion. I must make heaven. I must make heaven. Go ahead and talk to Jesus. Purify. Purify my life, Lord. Heaven is my portion. Lord, I will stand before you. Purify my spirit, purify my soul. Give me the grace with the grace. Abala Shanda Bahaji. Jana Masada. Yes, ma'am. Lord the grace. Libo the Shila grace. Purify me. Wash me. Wash me. Wash me. Make me pure. Come send quit me now To the service Lord Lord By the power Of grace Divine Lord I long to rest In the arms Of faith I'll be close I drum To thee Draw me near you today that the power of the Holy Ghost come upon you. Amen. The purifying fire of Jesus fall upon you. Amen. Anything that is not of God in your life by the fire of Jesus, it is consumed today. Amen. I disconnect from you the foundation and the power of sin. Amen. The power of unrighteousness, today it died from your life. Amen. I decree that a fresh relationship with the Holy Spirit is established today. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I decree that your heart desire is granted. Amen. Let every affliction from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet disappear in Jesus' name. Amen. Receive a testimony in your life. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Your hands for Jesus. Listen, the Holy Spirit just spoke to me that those of us here who forget dreams, he said that experience is over. And he said those also, I have this on this ear, he said those also whose dreams are always polluted, perverted, no matter how you pray, it's something bad that you see. He said I should tell you that the power that penetrates dreams, that turns dreams upside down, you are disconnected me today God is establishing you that after this encounter when you step into your house if there is a coven around that house that coven will be set on fire what stop others will not be able to stop you in the name of Jesus but don't, for, don't forget how don't forget how I started I said my sheep and I and they so you must be a sheep please no matter how much you are getting from a relationship of sin and that's what you are living with that's how you are taking care of yourself God has something better for you when you live a life of sin with him, God is still revealed to all. For he's my God and his name is Yahweh. His name is Yahweh. Yahweh. Oh, oh, oh. He's my God and his name is Yahweh. His name is Yahweh. Yahweh.
your majesty revealed to all Your love is so, so overwhelming To your government there is no end 